Sarah Rock and Robbins here coming to you live for a leadership tip of the day. As we get started, let's go ahead and get acquainted. If you don't mind, shout out below who you are and where you're tuning in from. And if it is your first time watching, click number one in the comments. I would love to warmly welcome you. And don't forget, click the share button right now. Do a little watch party with your team on Team Pages or in the inbox with a friend. As always, the more who know, the greater your team will grow. As you're introducing yourself, I'll quickly introduce myself for our first time watchers today. Who am I? I'm Sarah Robbins. I'm a former kindergarten teacher turned one of network marketing's top global leaders. We've built a team of over 300,000 doing over a billion dollars in sales. And I do share my best practices on my best selling book, Rock Your Network Marketing Business as well as in the Network Marketing University, all of which you can find at sarahrobbins.com. Now, quick question for you guys before we start in our free training. Who has signed up for the Network Marketing Inner Circle? Give me a shout out in the comments. I wanna just give a shout to our founding members. If you have not signed up yet, guys, if you have not signed up yet, I'm putting the comments uh, in the comments right now, the Network marketing inner circle.com check it out so i am doing a little meet and greet with our members this week we did some starbucks giveaways which was super fun um we're giving away thousands of dollars of free prizes in the group this week which you will hear more about if you're in there if you're on the private facebook group um, but we officially kick off with weekly coaching next week. So I'm going to be coaching every single week within the group, best practices to build your business very strategically. No matter what company you're in, no matter what level you're in, there will be something for you to level up. You also get live Q&A. Some people are like, oh my gosh, I would pay you just you know one time to ask you this one question. Did you get it every single week? Um, you get complimentary access to the Network Marketing University, every digital course that I have ever created, and my key to seven-figure success. And last but not least, um, the most supportive and collaborative community within network marketing. So Whitney said she's in the inner circle. If you are, shout out. If not, um, this week it ends, the complimentary uh, seven-day pass, so make sure you go now to the networkmarketinginnercircle.com. All right, guys, today's free training. Today we're going to talk about the power of thinking for yourself, but also when pressure promotes you as well. There's so many things and kind of themes that are going on in my mind right now, so I wanted to share those with a little bit, a little bit with you today. I'm going to first talk about pressure promoting you, and then I'm gonna kind of shift into, through the story, talking about the power of thinking for yourself. Because so many of you are allowing people to rent space in your head. The thoughts of maybe yourself, like the things in your mind, what other people are saying, thinking, speaking, etc. We're gonna crush all those fears today, and um, I'm super excited to help you with it. But I was thinking about this morning, you know, the glory of my story, and really the struggle that led to my strength. You hear people say, you know, that it's the trials that really build your testimony. When I think about my story of how I started as a former teacher facing the loss of my job, it was because I was facing the loss of my job that propelled me into new things. I had to look for new things. I had to look for new opportunity, which is how I found my business, which later promoted me in business and in life. And I think about even my journey in the business, that I faced so much pressure throughout the journey. There was definitely times where I wanted to quit, I wanted to go back to what was, but every single time that I persevered, that pressure led me to a promotion. Now, I wanna share with you two awesome uh, stories of men in leadership, and I promise you this, I'm not preaching at you today. I want you to literally like turn off the religious ears and don't you know get all mad at me. I want you to just think, okay, I'm gonna learn and I'm gonna learn about leadership today. There's a story about a man named Joseph. Again, I promise I'm not gonna preach yet, yet, but basically who was he? Well, there was a seven year famine that was responsible in this story for the Israelites ending up in Egypt. And at a time, a man named Joseph was in charge. He was second in command under the Pharaoh. Now, let's talk for a moment about a man who faced pressure, but he allowed it to promote him. Let's talk about Joseph for a minute. He was loved naturally, and that brought about jealousy. Oftentimes, if you're doing something really good, oh man, you just watch those haters start to come out. Everybody's got an opinion, right? Well, his own brothers plotted his death, 
And instead of throwing him into a pit to die, they sold him into slavery and he was a slave in Potiphar's house. Potiphar's wife lied about Joseph and he was thrown into prison for a crime he didn't commit. But Joseph, think about what he did. He was faithful and obedient and he actually kept an attitude of faith even in the pressure season. You see how we respond in pressure and amongst people's reactions, it actually sets you up for promotion. He was given favor by the prison warden and asked to interpret the king's dream. And when he did, he was promoted to being second in charge over all of Egypt and the people loved him. You see, he faced the pressure. He was obedient and faithful. Therefore, he was promoted from the pit to the palace. So let me ask you today, how are you responding in the pressure cooker seasons of life and in business? Do you retreat or do you persevere and press on and keep an attitude of faith? Now get this, we're gonna shift into another leader story here because initially, People flourished under Joseph's leadership, but eventually a new king came into power and was threatened that the Israelite population began to grow and prosper. Again, do you see the common thread here? When people are threatened, they were threatened that the Israelite population began to grow and prosper. So they ordered them slaves to the Egyptians. So God hears the cries. He sends Moses and Aaron to rescue them. Again, I'm not going to preach at you. I'm just telling you a story. And I'm going to tell you how it relates to you in your business. If you persevere through the pressure, he sends plagues. So basically, God permitted the problems. And why? Because the intention was actually to promote them. He wanted, the reason he allowed the plagues was to drive them out of Egypt and into their promised land. He knew that there was something better ahead. You know, for me, if I wasn't facing the loss of my teaching job, I would have never looked for anything else, which led me to network marketing, which now allows us to build our orphanages all around the world. You see, pressure pushes you. It promotes you if you let it. It moves you on to greater things and is intended to propel you into your purpose. After the last of the 10 plagues, you guys, Pharaoh agrees to finally release the Israelites. Moses was called to lead the Israelite people out of Egypt and out of slavery into their promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey. It was a promise. But here's the thing. Sometimes on your journey, it doesn't look promising. It doesn't. They face so many pressures along the way on their path to the promised land. But if you read that story, you would see all the way from Exodus through Numbers that even in the midst of pressure, the Israelite people were protected and God provided for them, and the end goal, God's end goal was promotion to greater things, not to hurt them, right? Not to harm them, to give them hope in a future, a greater land. I mean, I can just recall off the top of my head a few examples in that story. He protected them even in the midst of the plague. He parted the Red Sea. And, you know, we saw that he eradicated the Egyptian army, their enemy, before their very eyes. He made the bitter water sweet at Mara. The miracle of manna, bread coming from heaven. Yet despite all of the provision, the promotion, the protection, every time there was perceived problems, it's like the Israelites had temporary amnesia. They forgot all of the good things God has done. And they start blaming God. They start blaming man. They blame Moses. How many of you blame a leader? Instead of having an attitude of faith and persevering. Now see, here's the thing I'm going to challenge you on today. Sometimes God isn't so concerned with our problems as he isn't how we respond to them. You hear that? Remember, he permitted the plagues. Now I'm not saying God causes bad things to happen. You wouldn't throw your kid out into traffic, right? But sometimes God isn't so concerned with the problem as he isn't how we respond to them. And if we are obedient and respond with an attitude of faith, we can be promoted to greater things. It amazes me, you guys, how close they got to the promised land, yet most of them never made it because of their lack of faith, because of their lack of trust. You know, pressure came and they retreated. The pressure they faced, even though they knew there was a promise at the end, they got so close. In fact, when they arrived at Kadesh Barnea, which bordered the promised land of Canaan, they sent 12 spies in to survey the land. Do you know 10 
10 of them came back with a negative report and they said, oh, there's giants in the land. We seem like grasshoppers compared to them. Instead of sizing up their problem to God, they size themselves up to the problem. They're like, we can't do this. Except for Joshua and Caleb, they sized up the problem to God. They actually gave a good report. But what did the Israelites do? They believed the negative report. They believed the naysayers. How many of you are listening to a voice in your head or the voice of somebody else, and you're going to miss out on the promise and the destiny for your life? You guys, there was only two of one million who made it. So don't say that you're, you're, you know, all of the promises from God are guaranteed. No, we're called to obedience. We have to walk them out. Think about that. Most of them didn't make it. Two out of one million did. Joshua and Caleb, who chose to see the promise and drown out the voice of the naysayers. You know, I'm preparing today. I'm doing kind of a meet and greet with our inner circle today. And I put the, um, in the comments where you can join the network marketing inner circle.com. We were talking about our wives. We've been having some good discussions, but I saw a common thread that many of them over the years have listened to the naysayers. Number one, their own voice, the voice that tells you, you can't, oh, you are, con con you are a conqueror and you are more than capable. God wouldn't create you with a lack of limits or less. You are more than enough. You have to push through though. You've got to persevere. The naysayer, sometimes it's a voice of another person. Somebody said a spouse. Somebody said a voice of a leader of the past who told her she wasn't coachable. She didn't have what it takes. Don't buy the lies. Don't listen to the naysayers. I love that funny quote. You can't pay, pay people's, um, you can't pay your bills with other people's opinions, right? They don't pay your bills at the end of the day. The leader who told them they shouldn't do this or they shouldn't plug in. You know what I call that? I call that control. We live in an information age and people can find information anywhere they want. Or the leader who said, you know what? I'm going to do this for you. That would be like me saying, I'll go to church for you. I'll read the Bible for you. No, the Bible says we have to work out our own salvation. Nobody's going to save you but you. There is nothing like, if I were to liken it to a convention, I'm going to go to convention for you. There is nothing that replaces their life. There is nothing that replaces being in a supportive, collaborative community with like-minded people. You watching it live. You asking your own questions. You doing the work. You buying in to the process. Or even worse, people who had the spirit of fear. That's an naysayer too. And they confuse it with God's voice. Well, this is hard. So God must be telling me, shouldn't do this. Are you sure that's God? Because God's voice leads us with peace. Have you really prayed about that? Sometimes, remember what I said? It's the pressure is permitted. And it doesn't mean it's not what you're supposed to be doing. It could mean it's exactly where you're supposed to be. It's what's intended for you in order to propel you out of your comfort zone, out of that place of complacency, and into your promise. But whose report will you believe today? The Israelites believed the negative report and they listened to the naysayers. And immediately they started grumbling and complaining and wishing they could go back to Egypt. Egypt wasn't better, they were slaves. It was complacency. Instead of facing the giants with faith and pressing into the promised land, they wanted to go back to bondage in the wilderness. They didn't have a problem, you guys. They were the problem. Camping in the place of complacency, which eventually leads to decline. The journey was too hard. People say they lose their faith. Did you really or did it just get hard? How many of us want to go back to what was today? We want to camp in the place of complacency, stay in our comfort zone. We continue to wander in the wilderness, make a 40-day journey, 40 years. We wallow in our sorrow, the pain of the past, the thing that that person said. We complain how hard things are instead of pressing into our greatness. I remember being a teacher and facing the loss of my job when the economy took a turn for the worse. We were paying bills out of our quarter jar. And during that time, I started my business. And every time things got tough, when I faced rejection, I wanted to listen to the naysayer. I would threaten to quit. I think I quit more than anybody else in my company. But I learned a lot. I prayed through it. Ultimately, I persevered and I pressed on. And today, as a result, We've built an international business that is more of a blessing to our family and other families than I could have ever asked for or imagined for myself. And guess what? I still hear the naysayers. In fact, I've been hearing from them all day today. 
oh my gosh, you have a coaching program. Yes, I do, and it's going to bless a lot of people. I want you to think about how this business has blessed me through the time and the resources we have been able to provide to so many people in need all throughout the world, and that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. That's why I'm doing this. This is literally a dream and desire in my heart that I have literally been faced with for 12 years, and I literally fear the Lord more than I fear man in being disobedient and not doing the thing that God has called me to do. I am called to raise up the next generation of leaders. I am called to be a blessing, to bless other people in order so that you can be blessed and bless other people too. I'm not going to die with this dream inside because of what other people think about me. Oh my goodness. No. Why am I doing what I'm doing? To raise and up the next generation. To pull our profession together. One team. One mission. To change lives. Guys, if you haven't joined, it is going to be incredible. It is going to be not only a game changer, but a world changer. I truly believe I refuse to die with this dream inside of me. My passion is teaching and training and helping other people get to the place that they've been longing and dreaming to go. And this time, instead of being so exclusive, I'm only going to work with my personal team. I'm working with everybody. I don't care what your company is. I don't care what level your business is. I want to help you level up. So go to the networkmarketinginnercircle.com. You get a seven day free trial to see if you like it. What is it going to include? Weekly training with me specific to building your business. Weekly. You can ask me anything. Access to the most supportive and collaborative community in network marketing. We're not focused on tearing each other down or worrying what everybody's doing. We are focused on rising one another up. We did a really fun social challenge. We did some free Starbucks the other day. We're giving thousands of dollars away worth of free prizes this week. They're gonna hear about it today in our meet and greet and coaching officially begins next week. And then complimentary access to my Network Marketing University, access to every digital course I have ever created, thousands of dollars worth of content for free, just as a thank you. And it is my system to seven figure success. Guys, it is time to walk in obedience because here's the thing, your blessings are tied to obedience and other people's blessings, your legacy is tied to your obedience. If you've camped in the complacency, wanting to go back to what was, you know the price and the promise of network marketing because you've seen it again and again. But here's the thing. Nobody's going to pursue it but you. Nobody's going to say to you but you. It is time to pursue your promise. All right, guys. I hope today's talk bless you. I know it was kind of intense. Sorry. It's everything on my mind and heart. I'm being honest with you guys. Make sure to share it. Do a watch party with your team or in the inbox of somebody that you know would be blessed by this. Did you guys like today's free training? I hope so. Give me a shout. And um, check out the comments. Get registered now for the networkmarketinginnercircle.com. We officially start next week. Love you guys. God bless. And rock on, Rockstars. We'll talk to you real soon.